Our guest today, folks, is Fred Ernest. Fred is the CEO of Vista Gold. You've heard him many times on TFNN. We're going to get a nice update as to what's going on in the Mount Todd project in the Northern Territory of Australia. Fred Ernest, welcome back to TFNN. Um, good afternoon. How you been, man? Very well, thank you. Well, you, you've been busy. You've been, you've been, no doubt you've been busy. So let's talk about, you know, and if you go to, our, you know, to Vista Gold, folks, it's vistagold.com. You're going to see right on the very front that you have a Vista Gold is commencing um, a feasibility study for the Mount Todd project. Is that a good place to start, Fred? Absolutely. Yeah, we announced uh, just this week that we've uh, commenced the engineering to complete a feasibility study. Uh, it's important for everybody to realize that much of the engineering is already at feasibility study standards. And as a result, uh, we're going to spend uh, on the order of $3.3 million to complete the feasibility study, and we expect to have it completed in the first quarter of next year. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about that, because what you're saying specifically, so the work that you've done up to this place, it, so. Is it a legal term that we're talking about when you do a feasibility study for, for the like for the security world? Is, is that how that works, Fred? Absolutely. There's there's standards for a, a, a PEA, a preliminary okay. economic assessment, preliminary feasibility study, and a feasibility study. And and the feasibility study is obviously the most detailed. All of the cost estimates are based on material takeoff quantities, and it's a it's a very refined uh, estimate, and usually is the basis for a definitive investment decision. Nice. So now, if I back up a bit, you did a secondary prior to that, thirteen point five million. So when I look at the thirteen point five million, the, the bottom line, you wanted more cash in the treasury. Is that is that would that be? You know, but correct. Absolutely. You, you know, we've been very good about not diluting our shareholders. The last time we raised money was August of 2016, and and uh, with the uh, with the announcement that the mine management uh, plan had been approved in June, we were then in a position to uh, make the decision with regards to a feasibility study, and and we just needed to uh, to shore up uh, Treasury to make sure that we've got the money to finish this and get across the finish line with finding a partner. Nice. Now let's talk a little bit about the, the project itself in case there's, there's plenty of other folks, I'm sure, that newer folks that are listening that don't understand the project in general. So can you tell us a little bit about the project and, and just the scope and how big it is? Yeah, Mount Todd is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project with a little over 9 million ounces of resource uh, defined at this, at this point in time. The reserves for the project are estimated to be 5.85 million ounces, and and that's a number that will increase as we complete the feasibility study. Simply because the uh, the, the preliminary feasibility study was completed, the, the the reserve estimate was completed in 2018, a very conservative gold price of $1,000. So we expect the reserve to increase. Uh, this is a project that uh, once fully uh, once developed uh, as designed at 50,000 tons a day will produce just shy of 500,000 ounces of gold per year at, a, at an all-in sustaining cost of approximately $690 an ounce. That's pretty amazing, and that's an all-in cost. So an all-in cost, when we say an all-in cost, is that the cost of the gold and the cost of bringing the land back after the whole fact? That's the, uh, the, the all-in sustaining cost is the, is the uh, cash cost plus the uh, sustaining capital uh, added on top of that on a per ounce basis. I see. And and the, and the aspect, uh, let's talk a little about the drilling, because last time we were talking, you, you were opening up the drilling a bit, right? You know, we've uh, we've been drilling uh, now at Mount Todd since uh, last fall. We've been stepping out to the north. Uh, the objective of the drill program is to identify areas where future infill drilling can add resource ounces. And we've been drilling on sections, um, stepping out 400, 200 meters. It depends on what, we, what we're encountering. The results that we announced last week, uh, probably one of the best drill hole intercepts that we've had. We're starting to see some thickening of the mineralized structures, which is exactly what our geologists have been looking for. We've established the continuity of these structures. And, and this is confirming our belief that all of the known gold occurrences in the district uh, five kilometers north of uh, the Batman deposit are now, we're, we're, we're confirming that they're all interrelated, that they're all connected, that these structures are continuous. 
And uh, we fully expect that there will be pinching and swelling and, and where there's an ex a thickening or, an, or a swelling of the structures, that's the kind of target we're looking for. That's where we can add ounces in the future uh, in, in the confined space. And can you give us a little history in the aspect of the gold business in general? You know, it seems like, so I've been in this business now, meaning specifically in the gold part of the business for 25 years. I've been in the financial business for like almost 40, but it, it's amazing to me that you have a piece of dirt and then, and I am you geologist, I know, you know, I don't know how you sleep at night, man, because you wake up in the morning, it's like, am I going to find where this goes? So that happens in a lot of deposits, right? That you have a deposit and then the hottest, is one of the hottest things tracing where that deposit has come from or where it expands to? You know, it's a simple fact that the best place to find more gold is next to some place where you already have it. Right. And and understanding the the geology, where the gold came from, how it got there, what are the what 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 rocks are the host for for the gold, is very important. And this this process of tracking down, you know, where did it come from and how did it get there and what is it connected to. The only way we can do that efficiently is, uh, you know, through through core holes, through through drilling, and uh, you know, being able to get rock out of the ground and look at it, and the geologists, uh, you know, log it, and they and they and we drill oriented cores so we know what it, where it was oriented in the in the in the earth, and then we're able to start to paint a picture to put connect the dots and project uh, where where this is going, and and it's really a it's a fascinating science. And, uh, you know, the early discoveries take a lot of luck, but, you know, once you make that early discovery, the geologists really do earn their, earn their wages as they apply the, the knowledge that they have and the understanding that they have about how these deposits form. There's no doubt. So, so let's picture, I just want to fast forward a bit, right? When you're building a mine, I know you need water, electricity, and then how to get it out. How, do, how are you situated in those three things? Well, water, uh, we, uh, one of the permits that we received in June, right after receiving the approval of the mine management plan, which is essentially the same as an operating permit, we received authorization of our water extraction permit. Nice. And, uh, and, and what you see behind me uh, in, the, in the picture up here, this is the freshwater storage reservoir right up here. Okay. We now have the authorization to be able to raise the dam and 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 to a capacity that will have two years of operating storage capacity we have the authorization to use 3.4 gigaliters of water per year which is more than enough for the operation so we have the authorizations to create the storage facility and and to harvest the water with regards to electricity we will generate our own power we have a natural gas pipeline to the site we can generate power with uh, with the power plant that's part of the project uh, for for about a third, uh, a quarter to a third of the cost that we can buy it from the grid. And so roughly 10% of the CapEx of the project is for the power plant that we will build and operate. With regards to metallurgy, we've spent a lot of time over the last uh, five years optimizing and doing a lot more additional test work to improve the, the metallurgical flow sheet. We've added ore sorting. We've added two-stage grinding. This has allowed us to accomplish three things. One, we're grinding to a finer size. Second, that allows us to increase recovery. Our recoveries have increased from 81.7% to now just under 92%. And third, our total energy requirement as a result of these changes has gone down. We're actually being much more efficient in the way that we grind the rock. And so we've, we've essentially with the, with the metallurgical testing that's happened, we have uh, increased recovery, lowered our, our power costs, which will drives down our off. Well, listen, man, congratulations. Uh, look forward to having you on again, Fred. Great update. Really appreciate it, man. Have a great one, Fred. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.